All right, students, welcome to the next set of notes on solubility graphs. Again, go ahead, you can, in your notes, you can always pause this video if you need to take some more time to do the notes. You can scrub backwards if you need to review, but let's get started. The last time we talked about notes, it was solubility rules, and these were found on the back of your periodic table. But we can also find another thing on the back of your periodic table called solubility graphs. Solubility rules tells you if a substance will dissolve or not. And so we would look at the solubility rules. We would look at the products of our reaction, and we would say, all right, is it soluble or insoluble based on these rules? Solubility graphs are a little bit different. Um, these tell you how much you can dissolve. So we already know that the substance can dissolve. Now we're just wondering how much of it can dissolve at a given temperature. I'm going to take a closer look at the graph. This is more realistic of what yours looks like on the back of the periodic table. And so here you see all of these substances. These are, these are the different substances that we're looking at specifically, and the ones we'll look at in this class. There's a lot of different solubility graphs, but this is the one that we're going to use and the substances that we're going to need. Now take a look. On the left-hand side, we see our first variable. It's solubility. It's how much in grams of this substance we can dissolve in 100 grams of water or 100 milliliters of water. So the first thing to note is that all of these things are representative of stuff that are dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. So all of them are dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. And we're wondering how much or how many grams we can dissolve at a given temperature, which is our other variable. So let's take a closer look at that. Before we do that, let's explain what we're looking at. We're going to isolate potassium nitrate. So if you look over here, here's potassium nitrate. And this is the line for potassium nitrate. Now this line represents saturation. And so we're going to look at the three different parts. Let's look if we reached a point underneath the line, that's unsaturated or it's not full. If we hit the line itself, which is kind of the goal, that's saturated, meaning it's full. If we are over the line, that is oversaturated or we're too full. So let's take a closer look at what those three terms mean. Here's the first one. Let's say we have a test tube and we start putting some, some dissolved salt in there. Now notice that I can dissolve the salt and keep on dissolving the salt on the left side, this one right here. This represents unsaturated, so I can keep adding salt. Once I reach a point where the salt stops dissolving, so it makes just a tiny little clump at the bottom, that, re that reaches its saturation point. It's full. If I keep adding salt after that, none of it will dissolve, and I get lots and lots of crystals. That's oversaturated or too full. We could take a look at that again with the simulation here. I'm going to go ahead and drop some uh, salt crystals in the water and notice that they're all dissolving. So right now it's at the unsaturated point. But if you look right about here in the bottom, it, there's going to become a point pretty soon right here. At that point, it stops dissolving crystals. At that exact moment, it's unsaturated. Now right now it's oversaturated because no more will dissolve and I keep adding more. So there's unsaturated, saturated, and oversaturated. All right, so how exactly do we use this graph? Let's go ahead and take a look at an, at an example problem. So example number one, how much potassium, or sorry, sodium nitrate can be dissolved in 100 grams of water? So remember, this whole graph represents 100 grams of water. Everything is dissolved in 100 grams of water. And we're going to look for sodium nitrate. That's up here at the top left-hand corner. It's this red line right here. And it says, how much can we dissolve at 10 degrees Celsius? So I'm going to find 10 degrees Celsius. I'm going to follow it up to that line, and that's my point right there. And so it says here that I can dissolve 80 grams of sodium nitrate in 100 grams of water to, for it to be saturated. That's, how, that's the total amount I can dissolve before it stops dissolving. So 80 grams is our answer. I recommend seeing if you could solve this problem. I realize it says example one. This should be example two. But see if you can pause the video and solve this problem. It says how... Up to how much more calcium chloride can be dissolved in 100 grams of water if we raise the temperature from 5 degrees to 15 degrees? Go ahead and pause this video, see if you can figure it out. Did you pause it? All right, let's see if we can check your answers right now. So it says here we're looking at calcium chloride, and we're going to start at 5 degrees. And so I'm going to go ahead and follow my line up to 5 degrees. It's right about there. So we're about 60 grams at that point. But we raised the temperature to 15 degrees. So I'm going to come up here, 15 degrees, which is right about there. So we're about 70. So we went from 60 grams to 70 grams just by raising the temperature. And so how much more calcium chloride can we dissolve? Well, we can dissolve about 10 grams more, which is really great. So if we raise the temperature, we can dissolve more substances in there. 
Now, I want to show you a couple of trends. Uh, the graph we're looking at is so solid graphs. Now, if you look, if we increase the temperature for most solids, most of these things allow you to dissolve more. Now, here's a different solubility graph, and most of these things are gases. Now, gases are kind of the inverse. If you increase the temperature, most of these things dissolve less. And so uh, I like to think about it like this. If you think about solids, think about jello, right? The more you heat it up, you're supposed to heat up jello. You can actually dissolve more substances. Gases, on the other hand, you can think of like soda. Like what happens when you leave soda out when opened uh, in the air when it's you know warm outside? Well, your soda starts to go flat. That's because the carbon dioxide in the soda, soda comes out. It, it dissolves less in your soda. And so therefore, um, the gases trends usually decrease as temperature increases. All right, so how do you speed up solubility? What if I wanted to sol dissolve something faster? Well, there's three things you can do. You could stir the solution, and we know this, right? You put some cocoa powder in a hot cocoa mug, and you stir it, because if you just leave it there, eventually it might dissolve, but if you stir it, it breaks up those particles a lot quicker and causes them to dissolve faster. You could heat up the solution, like our example with Jello. We could throw Jello powder in cold water, and it probably will never dissolve, or it will dissolve slowly over time. Or you heat it up by stirring it, and you heat it up because those particles will bounce around a lot faster. They have a lot more kinetic energy. Uh, you could also increase the surface area as the last thing you can do. And what that basically means is just break it apart. If you throw a large clump of solid, uh, solid powder in something, it takes a lot longer than if you were to break it up beforehand and chuck it in there. So there's three things we could do to speed up the solubility of substances. All right, that is the end of our notes. Good luck, guys. Don't forget to do the practice.